Welcome to North Fulton Serves, a podcast where we share stories about people making a difference in our community and learn about how we can get more involved. I'm your host, Jason Binder, and with me today is local historian Connie Mashburn. Welcome, Connie. Glad to be here. Thank you. Today we're going to be discussing a little bit about the history of Alpharetta, uh, taking your passion of gathering that and uh, sharing it with our community, and just glad that you're here to, to visit with us. Thank you. My pleasure. So... You're a native of Alpharetta, right? Yes, I am. Tell me a little bit about your family. My uh, my mother's family, uh, her ancestors have been here since the uh, 1830s, several branches of them. And um, my father's family is from South Cherokee. Okay. Uh, so there, there are natives going, you know, a couple of them came in uh, from a, from uh, winning uh, a lottery, being successful drawers in a lottery. Been here since 1832. So, anyway, I, I, my mother was sort of a historian. She she uh, kind of prided herself on knowing who married who and that kind of stuff. So I, I kind of got interested uh, from listening to her. Now, was her history more through storytelling or was she – Gathering articles and and uh, no sto storytelling well. is what is what she passed on. Uh, her father was a a neat guy. He was uh, he never forgot anything he heard. He 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 was amazing, and uh, he was he was quite an entertainer, funny, and very smart. And uh, he told us tales. I hope most of them are accurate because I've used some of them. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Good. So in 2008, you authored a book called Alpharetta, Milton County, The Early Years. What brought that about? Okay. Uh, our sesquicentennial was in 2008. And uh, about 2006, Kim Zane, who was at the time manager of special events, um, was charged with responsibility to put together a program to, to celebrate our sesquicentennial. She had a couple years lead time. So she gathered together, I'd say 25 people or so, uh, a large committee, and, and put together several projects that she wanted to see us follow through on. And then she started assigning people to the individual pro projects. That sounds like Kim. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it does. She's a master at it. Uh, three, three of us on the on the big committee, uh, Howard Knight, Billy Bates, and I, uh, were history lovers, and uh, we were part of a group that's not existent now called the Old Milton History and Genealogy Group. We met one Saturday a month from 10 to noon and sometimes afterwards and sometimes we go to lunch. There was about 10 of us. And to give you some idea of the timing, everybody was older than I was then. Uh, and uh, the motto for the group was uh, no officers, no dues, no agenda, no problem. Sounds like a great organization. And it was, and that's pretty much the way it was. It's loosey goosey. Uh, come sit down, drink coffee. Um, somebody would bring up something about, well, who built that house, or how old is that house, or um, whatever happened to Ben Burgess. Uh, those kind of things. Yeah. And somebody would know, and somebody would pick it up and branch off all kinds of places. Um, uh, and it, it, biggest thing about it, it was fun. If you loved history, it, it was, it was, plus you learned a lot and I kept lots of notes. Um, and I think when the idea of, uh, a book came up, uh, with Kim, we, we had had in mind for some time, we'd like to write a history of Alpharetta, but we've talked about it and that's about all uh, we we didn't know anything about how to publish it or uh, really anything about how to get the book out 
So when Kim came up with this project and needed someone to do it, we jumped at it. And we were sorry about it the next day and for a long time after that (laughs) because we didn't know how much work it was going to be. So initially it was the three of us and we were going to, we were going to do the writing and we had no idea how to start. Uh, So our first try was to say, okay, um, Billy Bates, you take a subject. Why don't you take churches? Okay. Howard Knight, uh, schools and Connie, you take, wars or depression or whatever the case may be. So that's the way we started. And we went off and got in our writing spaces at home and and just started writing. Got back together about two weeks with Kim and started reading what the other person had read. And we talked to the, at the same time, we talked to the editor with Donning Publishing, who actually published the book for the city. By the way, the city the city fit the book uh, paid for everything. Wow. They uh, they paid to have the book published. Um so what what happened out of that that meeting was we realized that it was not going to work. Three people trying to write a book. Uh everybody had a completely different writing style. Uh some were broad brush, some were too detailed. Yeah. So we decided then that you know we had to we had to do something different. So I I drew the short straw and <laughs> and wound up having to do the writing. That and, was because you were the ranking junior member, right? Yes, so. I wasn't. I only had half a vote. Um, <laughs> but so so I did the the writing. Uh, but I spoke with Billy and Howard daily almost, and I spoke to other members of that group. Uh, frequently, if I had questions, I would go to whoever I thought knew the answer, and I always got an answer. So it's really, it's really a book by ten people, and I I just happened to be the one who did the writing, um, and it's a good thing because I I don't I don't know I didn't know all the stuff that's in that book. I think I know it now if I remember it. But it was uh, it was a joy. It was a joy to work with those people closely. Uh, it was a joy to work with Kim. Kim, I think, had had she not been on the job, I probably would have quit a number of times. But uh, she wouldn't let me. She just, you know, she she kicked me or something. Give you a pat on the shoulder and then she, kick you. Pat on the shoulder, right? That's right. Threatened me, but she was perfect for that job. So. Uh, I panicked almost every day. Um, I, I had no idea how long it would take to write a book. I'd never done it before. Um, and that, that uncertainty is what bothered me most. You know, am I on time? You know, am I halfway through, uh, with the time we have left? And I never really knew, never really knew until it was finished. And, uh, I was so happy (laughs) when it was over. I have to imagine to not only the the time commitment and then just jumping off into the uncertainty, but maybe realizing to the enormous uh, responsibility that you ha- you have in telling the story of Alpharetta and maybe making sure that you, you're getting it right or give it the right of, right frame of reference was was that a little you bit hit part the of nail it? on the head yeah that was that was a big part of it the other big part of it was it had to be done by July of 2008. Or we wouldn't have a book, and Mashburn is responsible for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that you know that was that was sort of a that was sort of a burden. But I got I got my second win maybe after a couple of months and figured out the time of day that that I could write best and write most. So uh, I used to always get up, cup of coffee, read the paper check emails and that sort of stuff. So, uh, so I changed and I got up, got a cup of coffee, went to my office and started writing. And that seemed to work pretty well. Sometimes I wrote virtually all day. Uh, My wife is extremely patient. I have to give her credit. She, uh, I think she enjoyed having me out of the way really. Uh, but it worked out and we finally, uh, 
you know, finally got it done. One, one of the things that we were uncertain about to begin with was how we were going to organize the book. And Donning had, had let us look at several books that they had published. They, okay. had, they had done this kind of thing before, did it for a church, for, for uh, a division of Georgia Tech and other cities and so forth. And there are a number of ways to, uh, to, to divide the pieces. You could do it uh, uh, chronologically. Chronologically, you could do it by topic. Uh, you could start to, at the end and come backwards, which okay. uh, probably would have worked for some. But uh, so we elected to go uh, by topic. So we we have like a community section, and the community section would involve the churches and the schools, uh, medical, the doctors, and that sort of thing. Uh, we had an entire section on depression and wars, and um, that was a, a big a big chapter. We had, uh, we, uh, we expanded our, what we initially had started with, with education, because we had so many schools around here. That's right. And, uh, we didn't we didn't have many until uh, around 1870, but then everybody Georgia passed a law in the 1890s saying that each county has to provide public education for their children, and and those there was no school buses of course in those days, so there every, like every couple of miles there was a school. So we tried to tell as much about them as we could, and we were fortunate enough to have a lot of pictures. Uh, speaking of pictures, um, early on. We started contacting people whose families had been here a while and uh, asking if we could borrow some of their photos. And, and people were very generous. Uh, I would get those, Howard and Billy, we, we were responsible for that. And then we'd hand them over to Kim, and Kim would scan them, and then we'd give them back. We okay. wound up with uh, something over 1,000 photos. Uh, and in the book, we used 250 of them. In fact, Donning gave us uh, a recipe. We could use as many as 250 photos, uh, and the book would be right at 190 pages. So that 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 wow. that helped. Looks like you, looks like you were pretty close to doing it with 160 pages. We had to do a, a lot of cutting. A lot of cutting. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. So you ready to, were you going to do volumes? <laughs> well, volume, volume one. No, but that could have been a much thicker book. Yeah. Um, so we that was a hard part, really. So going back to the sections a little bit, and it seems like you've done it more by subject matter with early history, community, mm -hmm. what people did for fun. What what section or what what piece did you enjoy the most? I think, I don't know if it was enjoyment. I think I was more interested in the Depression War okay. section. Um, I think the two big things, or if you, the two biggest things, I think, that happened in Alpharetta, and not it was every other little town in, in the country, too, was, were, was the Depression and then the Civil War. Uh, those two things had the biggest impact on the citizens and their lives and had the biggest impact on their lives. So that, that definitely would be the chapter. And the depression for Alpharetta had consequences and repercussions that, that we have today that, that just changed, you know, forever for Milton County. Is that correct right around that time yeah line. That, exactly uh not only did we lose the cotton business um and have all the financial problems that that um that other people had during those times but one of the biggest impacts of that was that uh we didn't have enough money to pay our school teachers and and keep our schools up we cut the school teachers pay cut the uh superintendents pay by three quarters and couldn't buy books so that was one of the biggest reasons i think that the city uh voted to or the county voted to merge with uh with fulton and when that happened by the way fulton had to vote for it and approve it 
Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. And Roswell, which had been in Cobb County, that's right. Yeah, uh, had to do the same thing. So we all it all happened at one time. It was January the first, nineteen thirty-two. Um, you know, the, the, we can go quite a distance with that idea. Uh, after we after we merged with the county. We got school buses, we got cafeterias, we got new schools. Uh, we, we got uh, central heat, we got plumbing. Never had those things before. And most people had to drop out of school after the seventh grade because they didn't have a way to get to high school. Wow. Uh, one, one interesting thing uh, uh, to me, Louis Jones was the state senator representing Milton County and uh, here's how he summed it up and I think he was quite influential uh, on having the getting the yes vote he says our schools are nothing but shacks in the fields and we have no roads to get to them so bad times now which section when people read it or they come to you and say wow I didn't know that I did not know that <clears throat> That's a tough one, too. Um, I think a lot of people, if they had heard of uh, Milton County, didn't realize that it was a relatively new county, that it was not an original county after the... the we're, we're in what was formerly the Cherokee Nation. Yes. It was roughly about one-fifth of the size of the state of Georgia, east of Chattahoochee, north of Carroll County, going all the way... Alabama line, to Tennessee line, and to the North Carolina line. And when that happened, uh, 10 counties were created out of that. Uh, and, and, and I'm glad you asked that because it's probably time to say this. Um, Cherokee County is a big county. Cobb County is a big county. And what, what brought about the creation of Milton County was simply it was extremely difficult for our people to travel. And by the way, they travel by horse or oxen or no cars for sure. No cars, definitely no, no 400 no, either. No, no. <laughs> well, that was a good thing. But, yes. <laughs> but um, it would take two or three days or three or four days, depending on the mode of transportation. If you rode a horse, you could get over there in a day. Oxen, two days. Um, but they had the... Uh, register deeds and and obtain marriage licenses and probate wills and those sort of sorts of things and it could take a four day chunk out of out of their uh, week and they couldn't afford that in the summer when they were farming so the state legislature took mercy and said okay we're going to create a new county that was in 1857 and said, okay, if you got a county, you need a county seat. And that's that's how Alfreda was created in 1858. Oh, wow. So that's the one right there. So as you were curating all this information, the photos, the the family histories, the genealogy, uh, you probably organized into a, quite a big archive. Is that what led to the creation of the, the museum that we now have today at City Hall? It, it played a role in it, I think. Uh, by the way, Kim uh, Kim Dodson, I think I mentioned that she scanned all these photos, but she played a big role in, in deciding which photos to use. She was a photography major at UGA and has a has an arty touch, and she was really good. At, and we argued about stuff, too. Uh, and you lost. Usually. usually. <laughs> she, uh, w we would sometimes get stubborn. I, toward the end, we were doing the chapter on wars, and uh, I knew a lot of the people who were in World War II and World War, uh, I'm sorry, the Korean War, not World War I. Um, and so, so I, knowing those people, I wanted to tell their story, and I wanted their photos to be in there. And Kim said, you know, you're getting too many of those. And I said, nope, I, I, I drew a line in the sand. I said, we're going to go with these. And it was not until the book was published and I saw how out of balance it was, yeah. I realized that she was right. But I don't think I've ever mentioned that to her. <laughs> so when did, when did you start 
UN CAM and the rest of the group decide to start saying well, we could use a museum or we have enough here to draw people. There was a lot of enthusiasm about local history uh, during the sesquicentennial, and it 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 went over into the general public, and it was not just the historians who were interested. Uh, about that time, we had discussions, informal discussions, with some folks from the city. Uh, we knew that the city, new city hall, was in the works, and we we felt like it would be really good for the citizens and for the historians if we could have a presence in the new city hall. And, and initially, we were thinking about moving our archives and library there. Uh, right now, we're in the in the Mansell House, and we're we're in a small room, a little bit cramped. Uh, so we thought that would be a good idea, and um, just sort of had it in the back of our mind when when the new city hall uh, actually was near in completion. We talked to Donald about it, and uh, <clears throat> as he has been with so many history projects, he he was very supportive. And um, so we started trying to look at various options and, you know, how we could make something happen. And he's the one that actually came up with the idea of a museum instead of our archi archives being there. <clears throat> so that, that kind of got the ball rolling. And uh, he, he talked with other city council members and mayor and Bob Regas and... Uh, got some excited excitement started and uh, so that was sort of the beginning and once the, the building was created what was completed there was a there was space and I think Donald had this in mind all along and it was big enough for museum um, so this, this the conversations got to be very serious and Bob put together a, a I'm sorry uh, Donald put together a group of people uh, he called it the big committee. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Bob Regas, uh, Tom Harris, Donald, and me. And we started interviewing design companies. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, the council had passed, uh, uh, passed, uh, approved uh, the funding of the museum. Of course, that was actually, that was the first thing. So we met with five or six different uh, design groups and picked one and city hired hired one. So that you know that we, we, we were we knew things were serious at that point. So we needed uh, we needed people to actually work on it from the historical society side. So we put together a team of I think there were six of us total. Um there was, I'm not sure if you've met uh, uh, Pat Miller. Yes. Pat Pat is was is the current president of our society. Uh, we brought in Mary Lee, who was the president at the time that we started the museum. Ben Hollingsworth, who had been president, and by the way, Ben has uh, an art background, and he's he's uh, he's another one of those uh, cross hybrid arts and uh, historian exactly. exactly. And uh, so he was, he was a big help with that knowledge he brought to us. And, uh, and then we had Stephanie Anderson, who was our archivist at the time. And she was, uh, she did a lot of things for us, but she, she was certainly the most technical of, of the group. And we, okay. needed, we needed her help too. So it was a great team. Uh, everybody worked together well and we could argue with each other and, you know, point the finger when something went wrong and those kind of things. Uh, and and when we began the meetings, Donald was at every meeting. Uh, and Bob came to a lot of the meetings. Tom got the finances all taken care of, and he would pop in from time to time. And then we would have this, this other group of five. Maybe we can talk a little bit about the objects that you decided to include. So with this working committee that you had, yeah. and you had thousands of pictures and quite a different mm -hmm. exhibits, how did you decide which ones to pick and, and expand on? The, the job of 
picking the objects and the documents that we used pro probably was the toughest part about putting the museum together from the standpoint of the historical society. And that essentially was our job. The uh, designer could make suggestions and that sort of thing. Uh, but we wound up with uh, 240 photos okay. and 115 objects that weren't photos. Um, and that fills the room up. One, one, of the, uh, one of the arguments, I suppose, we had with, with the uh, designer was they wanted to focus on a small number of items, uh, pick a few, six or eight, ten, items and and uh highlight those but we 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 didn't want to do that and uh of course they they went along with us so uh it looked it looks really good and i, I can maybe understand that because it's, it is a small space square footage wise so you don't want to make sure but it does it does a good job in that room of presenting quite a bit of items quite a bit of pieces of history without inundating you and uh, just being too much. Yeah, and that was that was the place we were trying to get at, you know. Uh, and I, I think we're I think we did okay on it. Uh, it's it's uh, the size of it, the number of items in there people can take from 20 minutes to to an hour if they want to and, and go through it and see almost everything. Judging from the people who've, who've been through there so far uh, in the, their comments, uh, the things that really interest them most can boil down to maybe eight or ten. I think the first thing is the display we have of Native American artifacts. Kids love those. Yes. Everybody likes those. Uh, and you've been through it. You know, we have some items, some, some arrow points and bird points. Uh, that were found down near where uh, North Point Mall is now. Uh, they they have some trading beads. And by the way, these were these items were loaned to us by uh, a local man who was okay. very generous in that regard. Um, we have some trading beads brought over by uh, European explorers, probably in the 15, 1600s. And uh, they didn't go directly through what's Alpharetta now, but uh, they traded the beads, and the beads wound up in this general area. Okay. So that fast, and those things, those those, this is this is really fascinating to me. Those beads were made near Venice, uh, and the economy brought it. Yeah, all the way. Yeah, through. all the way. And who knows how many exchanges. You know that, that that it took to get them here, but they were they were valued highly by the Cherokees. Uh, um, another thing is this, the Civil War display we have, and yep. we have uh, recordings of people reading letters from parents to 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 their soldier sons, and vice versa. And some of them are really sad. Uh, some from the uh, I guess the captain of the of, of the companies describing a death and extremely sad one of the letters uh, is is a letter to uh, uh, a lady whose son was just killed and and he also mentioned that the father of the son was killed two months earlier so that's a anyway that's that so sends chills up, that down your spine but that was a biggie um we had some cotton uh, items that we displayed. One a stalk that had over 600 bowls of cotton on it, a replica of it uh, that was uh, raised in crab apple, and it was in the state capitol for years. It finally disintegrated. But uh, some some people, and I can understand why they didn't grow up here, and but they're just sort of amazed to see what it looks like, uh, what cotton looks like, and how it grows and that sort of thing. Another impressive exhibit there is the Voices Project that you've, that you've been working on for quite some time yeah. with making sure, going back to 
from the beginning of this interview of talking about the oral history right. and the storytelling yeah. and you capturing generations of uh, stories of people that have grown up in Alpharetta and then have added families. Exactly. Uh, I don't, we, I guess we talk off. off yeah. The, now those, uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a topic. It would probably take a little time if we talked about it. Well, so. we can, we can talk about it. A little bit. I'd love to have you on again and and talk about it uh, in greater detail. I think it deserves deserves that much, and would love to share pieces of it. Okay. But yeah, um, I, I, it's it's it would take too long. I yeah. think, to, to but uh, I'm going to continue on the items that people seem to enjoy. Yeah. The barber chair. It's, I guess it's like barber chairs are now. I don't know, uh, but it was made in the '50s and it was used here in the city for gosh 40 years or so and then uh, it belonged to a particular barber named hope wallace and it was who was a character and uh, uh all his hair tonics and the equipment he used and the straight razor and all this stuff it's it's fascinating uh, to kids they seem to gather around it we had a group from milton come over um is it milton yeah is a local history class. Uh, we we do, Milton does have a local history class. Milton High School does, and, and we we support that. They've tried to help out on it, but they gathered around that barber chair, and that's you that's know. I mean, they went part. some other places, but that was it for whatever reason. Um, we have a a small but interesting collection of sports memorabilia from uh, Milton High School in the nineteen hundreds, nineteen fifties. Um, we have some sports memorabilia from two men who lived in Crabapple on old Rucker Road where the, where the park, new park is going to be, uh, one across the street from the other, uh, Nat Rucker pitched for the Brooklyn and Dodgers yep. in, the, in the 1907 to 1915 and his nephew, Johnny went on to play for the New York Giants in that's, the 50s. So. That's my favorite sports. exhibit right there. I like our that local too. sports stars. Yeah. Have you ever seen the magazine? It's on display. A picture of it is, but I'll get that to you sometime. Yeah, no, I would appreciate Great that. Great photos of old crab apples. Uh, so that was, that was a good one. And um, I think the poultry industry uh, surprised some people the fact that this was a big poultry area in, in the 40s and 50s and 60s. And we have some neat things from, we have handmade wooden troughs for uh, chicken feed that came from my family. Yep. <laughs> uh, and some some uh, clothing made out of chicken feed sacks. Huh. Uh, it, it was tough. You could, there were no fabric shops around in those days. So hardly. You had to make, make do with what you had. Yeah. And, uh, and the ladies started using the, uh, the sacks to make dishcloths, towels, and bed sheets in some cases. So the, the feed companies caught on and they said, well, we're going to make, make some pretty sacks. We're going to put flowers on them and stripes and things of that sort. So keep marketing uh, it. yeah, that's right. And uh, so when the chicken feed trucks would pull up to to the poultry farm, the housewives would come out and point out the sacks that they wanted. Make sure you keep that and don't rip, don't rip that seam too much. Or, yeah, you know. well, right. And they would they would make clothing for the kids. Uh, I can I can see how that would be surprising to a lot of people because you hear about our history within cotton. But then, what what was what was what were the economies afterwards? And then some yeah, chicken. Yeah. Chickens, chickens, but, and so, and we can keep going on uh, about a lot of things with the museum. Um, but what I'd like to know is, we we have such a fantastic group uh, trying to preserve our history and share our history with with others coming into Alpharetta, coming into North Bolton. What's what's next? What would you like to see as a, a big project for somebody? Maybe set to assign to somebody else younger, <laughs> ready to to make sure so we've we've heard things from the grist mill uh area to um the, the voices but what would you what would you like to see us continue um well by the way let me let me mention this jason the city of alpharetta has been fantastic in, in the in the way 
it supported our history community. And I can tell you, we're, we're the uh, envy of a lot of other towns that are close by. Um, so, and, and hopefully we'll continue to get support and, and we try to continue to earn it. Um, the book does not have a clean ending. It doesn't stop at 1953 or 1975 or whatever. So, um, I would like to see somebody pick it up from around 1970 or 1980 or whatever. And we, we're saving newspapers and uh, as, as much material as we can get our hands on that might be interested in the history. I'd like to see somebody start on that. The next, the next uh, mm -hmm. volume. Yeah, yeah. Take us up to current time. That'd be great. And then we we have the museum and we we have we have you to help share the, the history. If somebody would like to learn more and dig deeper into the archives, how how would they do that? We have an archivist who uh, who who will be happy to show anybody what what's in the archives and and uh, we have a website. Uh, it's uh, Alf, it's Alfredo Old Milton County Historical Society dot org okay. or A O M C H S. We will definitely have that up as a link for uh, yeah okay for, for this podcast and and uh, and we have listed uh, some of the items we have available for for uh, study. Uh, we have family files, we have subject files, uh, we have a, a a library type system for uh, recording our uh, the donations that come in. Okay. Uh, uh, on is we, we use a um, museum program and has worked extremely well for us uh, it, it's 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 a it's a filing system it's a uh, digital filing system really is what it is okay. we have photo photos of each item we have there so it's pretty easy to use and uh, we'd be more than happy to have people come in and look uh, We'd be happy if people uh, would be interested in joining our society. That'd be great. We have uh, we have a speaker every uh, once a month on a Thursday night at seven o'clock, except for the summers, um, and we have a wide range of subjects that we talk on or hear about. Uh, that would be good, and they can get information on that from the same website. Uh, we we we've. You touched on a good point. The the um, the locals like myself, we're we're fewer and fewer. <laughs> uh, so and and we have we we have some people who are coming along who didn't grow up here, that weren't born here, but they really want to know about where they live. Their their children are going to grow up here, grandchildren. Uh, they they made it their home, so we like to see that. We like to encourage that, and uh, if somebody has a sliver of interest, we'd love to get with them and tell them how you know it's been done before. So, well, I think I think that's great. And I from the you you brought it up earlier about the city working with you and being good partners, and I think it's all of us collectively just trying to share the narrative, share the story of Alpharetta. And you, you've done good to make it where it's easy to read and somebody come in that's made Alpharetta their home to further fall in love with it because of the rich history. And a lot of that is, is to, a testament to you and your hard work and the work of your team. And Well, there's, as I said earlier, there's been a lot of people involved with it. It's got my name on it, but... It's got your name, and and you've been you've been selfless in your time, and you've been selfless in sharing uh, the accolades for it, and you've you've had uh, Billy and and Howard's name on there, his dedication, and Kim Kim Zane, uh, and it's definitely been a team effort. But it it makes Alpharetta uh, a place that you can fall in love very quickly and call home. And so, thank you very much for that. Thank I'd you. Thank I'd love you. to have you back in again and we can do more more of a history lesson and, and talk okay. talk about the All different right. things there and I'd what like your that. next projects are that'd be great so thank you very much thank Tom. you don't forget to look for the north fulton service podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts on and on youtube 
Don't forget to rate and subscribe the show. You can follow me on Twitter at Jason Binder and be sure to tune in every Thursday for a new episode. Thank you for listening.